From the day that Jaraji started to give Dhamma talks in this 60-day special meditation retreat, Jaraji first explained what the yogi should follow in the practice. Saraji explained that the Nama Rupa that are arising at the sixth sense door are the fields of objects to be noted. And these Nama Rupa are arising continuously. And Saraji explained from theoretical aspect. In the field of objects to be noted, there are the Nama Rupa that are arising at the present moment as cause and effect. Jaraji explain from both theoretical and practical aspects so that yogi understand the fields of objects to be noted and to note the presently arising object. Whatever object that arises, these Nama Rupa are to be noted. And the duty of the yogi is to note the presently arising object with aim and effort without missing without failing. Within the 24 hours, apart from sleeping hours, yogis should be mindful throughout the day from the time they wake up until they go to bed. Whatever posture they may be in, they should be mindful of every object in detail every movement, every general activity such as opening and closing of the eyes, blinking, and so on. Yogi should be noting every object, even the minute object that arises without missing, without failing. In noting the object, the deep mindfulness should stick onto the object. When Kanika Samadhi, momentary concentration, becomes strengthened, the noting mind will fall calm and collected on the object. In the beginning, Yogi has to make the habit of aiming, directing the noting mind onto the object. As the Yogi becomes Skillful in the practice, the noting mind becomes concurrent with the object, the noting mind being face to face and direct with the object. And when there is samadhi, mindfulness, sorry, when there is samadhi, concentration, the noting mind will fall calm and collected on the object. When the noting mind falls calm and collected on the object, Yogi discerns the true nature of the object. And Saraji explain. Saraji will explain with an example in the worldly sense so that Yogi will understand better about the practice. In explaining the Nama and Rupa, mentality and materiality. There are many examples given so as to understand how the Nama and Rupa, mentality and materiality, take place, connecting to each other. There is the easiest example given of a cripple and a blind person. When it is said that the person is crippled, it means a person who cannot use his legs 
that his legs may be uh, his legs cannot walk so he may have hurt his legs or he was born with a weak leg that he cannot walk so the cripple cannot walk but he can make use of the eyes and ears so he has good eyes good ears but cannot walk is a cripple and the other person is a blind one the blind person can walk his legs are good but cannot see even though the legs are good but being blind he cannot see he cannot walk by himself not seeing the way to go so in this example in order to go on a journey the cripple and the blind must be together so the cripple leads the way where to turn or to go straight and the blind has to walk according to the direction that the cripple is guiding so in this way the cripple is leading the way showing where to walk where to turn and the blind person takes the step one after another so in this way they make the journey where the cripple sits on the blind person and the blind person walks this example is given in order to explain how the nama and rupa mentality and materiality are arising together in the case of seeing hearing smelling tasting touching and knowing in the example when sitting down from standing position there is the intention to sit series of intention to sit without the series of intention to sit the day will not take place intention alone without the materiality there will not be sitting so they are the nama and rupa mentality and materiality the intention to sit series of intention to sit is the nama mentality the actual sitting down the body becoming heavier and heavier sitting layer by layer it is the rupa materiality so in the sitting down the intention to sit mentality and the actual sitting down materiality are arising in pair in the example of the crippled person and the blind person the crippled person sits on the blind person and leads the way as the crippled can see where they are going so this crippled person is compared to nama mentality which has the ability to cognize and the blind person who has to walk is compared to rupa materiality just as the blind cannot see in the same way rupa materiality cannot cognize so it is the materiality that cannot cognize and is compared to the blind person so in the in seeing hearing smelling tasting touching knowing these nama rupa mentality and materiality are arising in pair nama alone cannot arise 
Rupa materiality cannot arise in the case of seeing, hearing, smelling, tasting, and so on. So these Nama Rupa, mentality and materiality, are arising in pairs. So the example is given of a cripple and the blind working together to go on a journey. In the same way, the Nama and Rupa are arising in pair, in seeing, hearing, and or any other kind of work is made of the mentality and materiality. Because there is the intention to walk, walking takes place. Intention is the Nama, walking is the Rupa. The intention to bend, nama, and the bending, the rupa. The intention to stretch, the nama, the actual stretching, the rupa. So they are, these nama rupa are arising in pair. And to explain the nama rupa arising in pair, there is also the example that is explained in a modern way of where the electricity goes through the engine to keep the engine rotating. Buddha taught Saramana Dhamma. Saramana Dhamma are the Nama that can take the object. So the Nama mentality can cognize the object. In seeing, hearing, smelling, tasting, touching, and knowing, the Nama can take the object. That's why the Nama is called Saramana Dhamma, as the mentality can take the object. Anaramana are the Rupa materiality which cannot cognize the object. So these rupa materiality are to be known by the nama. The rupa are called anaramana as they cannot cognize the object. They are cognized by the mind. So these Nama Rupa are arising in the animate being. So in the practice, the person should not be looking on the things that are outside, but Jogi should be mindful of the things of the Nama Rupa that are arising within oneself. So Buddha also taught that the person should be observing, being mindful of the Nama Rupa that are arising within oneself. By discerning the objects that are arising within oneself, one will also know that it is the same that are going on in the other person. So in this way, Pachaka Sita, meaning accomplishment by direct experience, one can directly experience the Nama Rupa that are arising within oneself by being mindful of them. Discerning the Nama Rupa by Pachaka Sita, direct experience, by being mindful, one can also come to inference and deduction that it will be the same in other person. So having deduction and inference that it will be the same in other person 
it is called Anwaya or Anumana Siddha, accomplishment by inference and deduction. But in the practice of the Dipatthana, one should be mindful of the Nama Rupa that are arising within oneself as they are certain. One should not be observing on the Nama Rupa that are arising in other persons as it is not certain what is going on in the other person. By discerning the Nama Rupa that are arising within oneself, one can come to know by inference what is also happening in the other person. But actually, the person should be mindful of the Nama Rupa that are arising within oneself, as it is certain. Buddha did not teach to observe things that are not certain. That's why yogis should be mindful of the Nama Rupa that are arising within oneself and not the other person. In the being, the materiality has the four conditions, Gamma, Chitta, Udu, and Ahara, one deep, the consciousness, temperature, and the nutriment. So there are the materiality that are produced by karma. These materiality that are produced by karma are the eye, ears, nose, tongue, body, and Hadaya Vatu, the heart face. The deeds that were done in the past are not known, but humans have eyes, ears, nose, tongue, body, and the heart which are in place in functioning. Uh, in functioning. So it is quite amazing how the body parts, eyes, ears, nose, tongue, body, and the heart in place in order to function. And even the scientists have not found the reason why the eyes, ears, nose, all these are in place in functioning, how they are in place. So it is quite uh, profound. So leave it, uh, leave it for now. But how the materiality are produced by the condition, Chitta, Udu, and Ahara, the mind, the temperature, and the nutriment are quite obvious even to the ordinary person, especially the yogis who are practicing, they can find out how the materiality are produced by the mind. So because of the intention to lift the foot, lifting of the foot takes place, because there is the intention to place the foot, placing of the foot takes place. So in this way, the mind is the cause where the rupa materiality is the effect. So in this way, the people who practice the Dipatthana meditation can understand how the mind-made materiality takes place. Also, in the example of opening and closing of the eyes, blinking, all arise due to the intention. So one can understand how this mind-made materiality takes place. So without the intention, the body will be just like a dead person. Because there is the intention, the vayu dhatu, 
the air element flows in the body which can make the body move. So when there is the intention, the air element flows in the body and the body will have the movement such as sitting down, standing up, bending, stretching. This is compared to the example where the electricity goes through the dynamo. The electricity is compared to the mind and the dynamo is compared to the materiality. A dynamo is made up of metal. In the dynamo there are also other metal parts and the metal wire. Dynamo alone will not move, it will not generate, it will be just like death. By pushing the button, the electricity goes through the dynamo and the dynamo starts moving. So this example is given in order to explain how the mind the produces the materiality to take place. Without the mind, the body will be just like a dead person. It will not move at all. So when the intention, the mind, takes place to move the body, then the body will move. So just like pressing the button in the same way, when there is the intention to move fast, moving fast, there will be, the body will move fast. When the intention to move in a regular speed, the body will move regularly. And when there is the intention to move slowly, the body will move slowly. So in this way, the intention or the mind produces the Vayodhatu, wind element, that pervades in the body, causing the body to move, bend, or stretch. In the example of the motor, the electricity goes through and the motor, the generator, uh, starts to move. And the other parts of the engine will also move. In the body, in the person, there is the Nama Rupa, mentality and materiality are arising. There is no Jiva Atta, the living soul. There is no Parama Atta, the supreme soul that is creating. So in the whole world, there is no creator, no Parama Atta, no supreme soul. Because of the intention, the actual movement takes place. So in order to understand, one should be mindful of sitting down from standing position. There is the series of intention to sit and the sitting takes place. And yogis should not be imagining or thinking, but they should be mindful when they sit. The, there, is, there will be the series of intention to sit and the actual sitting down takes place. In the sitting down, there involves the element, Batavi, Dejo, Abo, and Vayo, the earth element, temperature element, water element, and the air element together with the other materiality as the visible object, the smell, the taste, and the nutriment. So in the setting, Vayotatu, the air element, is most prominent. There is no 
Jiva Atta, no living soul, there is no Brahma Atta, no supreme soul that is creating. But in the sitting down, there involves the Nama and Rupa, mentality and materiality. The elements, Patavi, Dejo, Apo, and Vayo, the four great elements, the earth element, temperature element, the water element, and the air element, arise to do the Jita, the mind. So in the sitting, there are only two things, mentality and materiality. Without the mind, without the intention, the body will not move at all. So there should be the intention in order that the body to move. So in the example, the electricity goes through the engine and the engine starts to move. In the same way, the series of intention to sit generates the actual body to sit down. So the intention to sit is compared to the electricity. The body actually sitting down is compared to the engine. Because there is the intention to sit, the actual body, the materiality, will start moving downward in sitting. The same goes in other postures, walking, standing, sitting, lying, as well as other activities. They are only the Nama and Rupa that are taking place in all these postures, in all these movements. So in order to discern the Nama Rupa, mentality and materiality, Jogi should be mindful at the moment, sitting down, at the moment of standing, lying, bending, stretching, and so on. Not being mindful of these activities, Jogi will not come to discern the Nama Rupa that are arising as cause and effect. In the example where the electricity goes through the dynamo, there are scientists who study this field. So in order to know about the electricity and the dynamo, how they work, they cannot know by looking with the naked eye, but they have to use certain instruments in order to find out. So such kind of people, they are experimenting and studying this kind of field. Such kind of scientists, they understand about electricity, but the way they understand will not be so much in detail where the materiality, where there are the particles of materiality that are taking place. So these scientists, they are inventing new things with electricity and other things so that such kind of new gadgets will be invented for the mankind. So what they are doing is not for the, not to be free from suffering. So they are just inventing things in order to be useful for the mankind. So such kind of study has nothing to do with understanding that the Nama Rupa are impermanent suffering or non-self. Through the practice of Siddhivatthana meditation, one can discern that the Nama Rupa are impermanent suffering and non-self. Through the practice of Siddhivatthana, 
when the person has discerned that relevant cause is giving rise to relevant effect, then the person comes to understand that there is no living soul. What is really present, what really exists, are the nama rupa, mentality and materiality. It is not the Ishara, the creator that is creating, but the nama rupa, mentality and materiality are arising as cause and effect, and there is nothing permanent. The nama rupa are not permanent. They are suffering, and there is no self in them. Saraji has been explaining Bhutan Bhutato Pasati. Bhutato is defined as Yatha Sabhavato, meaning that by noting the object with aim and effort repeatedly, Jogi will discern the unique individual characteristics of the Nama and Rupa. Salakanato, meaning that Jogi will discern the unique individual characteristics of the Nama Rupa. Discerning the unique individual characteristics of the Nama Rupa, Jogi will also come to discern the Nama Rupa cause and effect. And from then on, Jogi discerns that the object arise and pass away. It is suffering as these objects constantly arise and pass away. And they are arising in their own accord. There is no jiva atta, no living soul. There are only the, the nama rupa that are impermanent, suffering and non-self. So in this way, Yogi will also discern the characteristics of impermanent suffering and non-self. By discerning the unique individual characteristics, discerning the Nama Rupa, and the Yogi will also discern the cause and effect. And when Viriya, Sati and Samadhi, efforts, mindfulness and concentration become strong, Yogi discerns the characteristics of impermanent suffering and non-self. In every Nama Rupa, they are the characteristics of impermanent suffering and non-self. So the characteristics of impermanent suffering and non-self are common to all the Nama Rupa and thus the characteristics of impermanent suffering and non-self are called Samanya Lekana, common characteristics, which are common to all the Nama Rupa. And Saraji will continue to explain tomorrow. Sadhu, Sadhu.